Hey, all right, so this is my review of the EcoWorthy dual axis solar tracker and their 195 watt solar panels, which I've installed. And a couple of uh, things that I love about it, things that I uh, think they can improve and uh, just my overall feedback on it. Um, okay, so a couple things when I was installing it, the, the manual is okay, but to be blunt, I really learned how to install this thing properly look, watching other people's YouTube videos. The manual is lacking a, a bit uh, still. Apparently it's gotten better, but a um, couple things that I'll talk about here in a second. Um, one thing that is not really clear up front is how to power the, so the solar tracker. Um, it does say in the manual that you need 12 volts to power the controller and the actuators, but it doesn't tell you how to do that. And there are obviously ways, different ways to do it, but it would be helpful. I think if they at least give a little bit more detail on the, the different options, right? So it's not just very clear. So that's another thing that I learned from others watching YouTube videos. Um, and then the first thing, obviously, before you build the, the solar tracker is the base or the concrete foundation. And the manual does call out, you know, what they recommend for the foundation. Um, and there are a lot of people doing a lot of different things, obviously, uh, that kind of vary. But one thing that I thought was a little subpar were the anchors that they actually provide with the kit. So these that solar tracker base and i'll walk over there in a, in a minute um they give you these little compression anchors and these are like three-eighths bolts and sure maybe engineering wise they would work but it didn't give me any confidence i live in an area in central oregon with high winds and i, I need that thing to be beefy so fortunately it also came with a plate in the box so this plate was in there it didn't have the holes in it so what i did is i marked this plate to the base of the mount and then i drilled these out and fortunately the holes in the base of the mount are half inch well they're probably nine sixteenths but you're you're able to get half inch concrete anchor bolts in there which is what i used um so let me show you that the other thing, there's quite a few things actually, but let me just start with the base and the mount and go from there. Okay, so, so here's the base. Um, I ended up doing um, a three by three by roughly three foot uh, concrete pad. So, oh, it's moving a little bit. Um, dug down about two feet because I have bedrock and, and the reason I, I, it's sticking up about 12 inches but that's about 27 cubic feet roughly, and uh, which is sufficient, meets the spec of the manual. Um, but here's what I was talking about. So these, the anchors here, I put in half inch concrete anchors. And uh, this is a lot beefier um, than what they provide. So I'll just leave that at your discretion on how you want to do that but that's what i would recommend doing especially if you're in a high wind area like me um i've seen people putting that that mount on like a flange and welded to a pipe that goes in the ground with concrete and they'll do uh like a round um concrete base instead of a square so i mean whatever your prerogative is. Um, so back to talking about the power supply, right? So uh, the controller mounts right to the side of the of the, uh, the mount, the mast. And this controller, which controls these actuators, requires 12 volts, like I said. So I decided to go with another solar panel. That's a 100 watt eco-worthy solar panel that I, uh, I, I bought an extra. Um, all of the solar panels that are on the solar tracker mount are 195 watt eco-worthy panels. 
which is what kind of comes what i think this this solar tracker was designed for those panels and and they offer it as a kind of a kit um and i'll talk about the cost here in a minute but i got the whole package right and then i had to buy this extra solar panel to power the solar tracker controller and so what i did is i got this 100 watt panel and and then i got a battery it's a 12 volt lithium iron battery and there's a little trickle charger in here so there's my battery and there's the trickle charger that's hooked up to the solar panel and then from that battery i've got you know wire going underground over there up and to the solar tracker controller so so that worked out pretty good been pretty happy with that um so that's just one way to do it like i said you can do it a lot of different ways so overall i've been pretty happy with the performance um i built this thing so i could charge up i've got some ecoflow delta pros and i wanted to power those with solar so i built this for that and um i've got two delta pros with two extra smart batteries um and so my my power goes underground over to my solar shed and i've got them connected directly to uh the delta pros and now let me clarify you can't from one solar array you can't go to two delta pros you i have to, i have two disconnects and i have to toggle between the two you can only charge one delta pro at a time or they will fight each other so um anyway but this thing so six 195 watt panels that should give me on peak sun uh i think it's 1170 uh, if i did my math right yeah so 1170 watts would be the the max peak power right i built this a couple weeks ago uh, it took me about a week to do the concrete pad and then another week to get the mount up and you know if I had just been dedicated to doing it, I probably could have done it in two days. But, uh, you know, I got a job. So, <laughs> anyway, um, the, it's, it, right now it's the middle, it's the end of June. The summer solstice was a couple weeks ago, or about a week ago. And with perfect sun, even in the middle of the day with the sun directly overhead and the solar tracker pointing directly at the sun, I should be getting that full 1,170 watts out of those panels, but I have not, not once. The most I've seen is 1,000 watts. So I'm short, you know, 170 watts, and I tested each panel and, you know, what they call the open circuit voltage, and it's about a volt less per than the spec. And I reached out to EcoWorthy about it, they're like, oh, it's within the spec. You know what? It's not. So, you know, I, it's fine. I'm, I'm getting the, the amount of power I need to charge my Delta Pros, but I'm not buying another eco-worthy solar panel for that reason, because they do not produce the power that they're rated for, uh, you know? So I'll leave that up to you, but you know, if anything, a solar panel should perform a little bit better when you, when you buy, I buy a brand new one. I've, do, I've been doing solar for years and, and these don't. They're about, you know, 100, 195 watts, 5 to 10% less than what they're supposed to be doing out of the box. That's not good. So, um, so that's my first complaint. Um, the second, you know, even, even though the new EcoWorthy panels are fairly cost, um, I mean, there are cheaper solar panels out there. But these price per watt, eh, a little high in my opinion. Um, I, like I said, I went with them because I wanted to go with the, the total package because that's what the mount is designed for. Um, I know people are putting different solar panels on the, on the dual axis tracker. You got to be careful because if you go too heavy with your panels, it, you'll have to upgrade your actuators. I've seen videos of people having to do that. Um, you don't want to put something that's heavier than the 195 watt panels you can do lighter obviously that'd be probably fine but you don't go heavier because you'll have problems um 
And then yeah, one other uh, bit of feedback here on this mount. So this, uh, there's a couple different things. This is the sun sensor. And, you know, right now my solar tracker is pointing directly east. Um, it's early in the morning and, you know, it'll, it'll track the sun and go west and, and point south if it needs to, all because it's sensing the sun here. Now, this is not the, the bracket that came with the mount. Okay, so I found the, the, the piece that actually came with the mount. So this, this is the bracket that came with the kit. And it is literally just this flimsy aluminum. I mean, I can literally just bend it with my hands. So that's the first thing. Look how flimsy that is. And then like I can, I can fold it over, right? And then look at the holes. They, they are not punched evenly. So this is, just, this is just crap in my opinion. Those holes should be lined up. So even if I did try to use this for the sun sensor, it, it wouldn't like, it, it just, it was frustrating because I'm like, well, this ain't gonna work. And I would have had to ream it out and whatever. So I ended up going to Home Depot and getting a couple pieces of angle iron, uh, uh, just uh, I'll, I'll show you what I did. Um, but uh, this is a lot beefier. So I got two pieces of uh, angle uh, at Home Depot and I bolted them together, much more rigid um, and secure. So like that a lot better. Okay, so let's talk cost here. So the total amount that I spent for this whole thing, including concrete, wiring, miscellaneous, you name it, $2,140. Which, if I had known about all the extra stuff I would have had to get, I probably would have gone with a different solution. So like I said, with 195 watt panels, six panels, that total wattage is 1,170 watts. If I were getting a thousand, you know, but I've only been getting a thousand watts total. So if you divide the total price of this by the watts, that's $1.83 per watt. That's way too high. Um, I could do a ground mount, which is probably what I'm gonna do on my next solar array for, well, I could probably get panels for about 50 cents a watt. You can get used panels for even down to 20 cents a watt if you don't consider shipping from Santan Solar. Um, but yeah, I can I can get another array put up for way less than a, even a dollar a watt. So that was a little discouraging. So let me break it down. Okay, so the tracker itself, if you buy just the solar tracker, is 440 bucks on EcoWorthy's website. Um, if you get the solar panels, um, they're roughly eh, almost a thousand bucks for the six uh, 195 volt panels, but for the the kit with the tracker and the solar panels, it was 1380. So uh, 1379.99. So 13 hundred dollars and eighty, or yeah, 1380 dollars. Um, the concrete for the pad uh, and all the rebar uh, was about 300 bucks. Um, it was like 200 bucks, well, a little over 200 bucks for the concrete, and then all the rebar and all the other stuff, and then um, the wiring to to get back to my solar shed and, and the miscellaneous stuff was about 250 bucks and then miscellaneous uh, parts and pieces, hundred bucks. Um, so like I said, 2,140 bucks. Um, I know EcoWorthy is generally selling things at a pretty good value, but if you, ha you have to factor in all the parts and pieces that go into actually putting this together, um, you know, and you know, a lot of people may not be aware that, you know, you've got to factor in those costs. So, and if you're doing it yourself, you're saving your, your, you know, I didn't consider my time in that total price. I did this completely myself. I didn't have any electrician or anybody help me. So if you have to hire someone to do your concrete, you have to factor that in. If you have to hire someone to wire it up, you got to factor that in. If you hire an electrician to, to hook up to whatever you're hooking up to, whether it's, you know, your, your main panel, whatever, you got to factor all that in too. So just keep that in mind. Um, but you know, 
overall i give this a thumbs up um it has been tracking the sun nice uh setting it up wasn't too difficult uh is generally it's programmed right from the factory but you do have to adjust for your location for the settings and uh yeah oh one other thing so another part of this mount there's a wind meter and which is great because when when this senses uh too much wind this solar tracker will adjust and go to level um completely flat so that uh you know it protects itself from wind damage now it came with the wind meter and it was all this was kind of pre-wired which was nice all you had to do is make connections that was all great and but it did not come with the mount so you know you notice you can just bolt this right there was holes already in this mast for this controller but there's no mount that comes with this so you have to make something and i just used a piece of uh you know pressure treated lumber with a shelf bracket and just self-tapping screws right into the pipe mast and that worked great and you do have to stick it off a little bit to, so that your wind isn't disrupted by your pipe mast um but you don't want to go too far because you'll hit your panels obviously so you have to just kind of gauge that i think the total width or length i'm sorry of that board is about uh, 16 inches so um anyway so that was one thing that i'm like well you got to come up with something for that uh what was the other thing oh so the manual you see how you look at the this this arm right here this is for the actuator that that tilts it obviously east west this this long one right here and this this bracket or this uh part of the uh, mount you, you see how it's i'm looking at the south side right now so you see the south label and you see how that arm is on the left side of this so this is on mounted on the left that is the right way to mount it uh so you don't have to change the wiring in the in the controller but the manual shows this on the other side kind of on the so this is the west side over here on the left and this is on the west side mounted up here on the west but the manual shows it on the right on the east side if you do that that's fine it will still work but you have to flip the east west wires in the controller i didn't want to do that so um another interesting thing about this mount is with with it that uh actuator kind of on the west side like that you get the you get more tilt to the east which i like because you get that morning sun better uh first thing when your batteries are low and it charges things up pretty quick um if you flip that where the actuator is actually on the east side of this arm here then your tilt you get more tilt on the west side so you can do it either way but if you flip that over and you go by what the manual says, you have to flip the wires in the controller. So just keep that in mind too. All right. Well, that's it for my review. I think for the most part that covers everything. Um, yeah. So do I recommend it? Sure. I think it is a good solution. Um, works great for my application. You'll just have to decide whether it works for you. So, um, but like I said, if I were to give it, I don't know, a rating from one to five stars, including my back and forth with eco worthy tech support or whatever support, I'd probably give them three stars, maybe three and a half. It's not a five star system, you know, it's not a five star, five star value. It's, it's just not, it's not that great. So, um, Anyway, that's it. Hope this was informative and helps you out. Make your decision on what you want to do. And thanks for watching.